Ah, good afternoon. So I'm here with my new Hill EC3000 compressor. I'm just going to do a quick run over of all the parts and how, how it basically all works. And uh, I'll run it up. I've actually put a, a blank on the end of the actual lead here. It comes with this uh, female connector. So I put a blank on so I can actually run it and pressurise the actual pipe. So it all runs. So at this end, you've got your piston behind your fan. Down there you've got your fan. The fan runs when you turn the unit on. So that's running to cool it. Down here you've got your silicon, now you come with two bottles, you've come with silicon oil and crank oil. Um, both the bottles have corresponding colour tops so you can't really mess it up. Um, you fill the crank oil, which is red, to where the red dot is in line with that. And you fill the silicon oil in line with that blue line, okay? This is your bleed here, your air bleed, so make sure that's shut. Uh, two fingers is enough, yeah, just to make sure it's nice, you know, don't over tighten these things. Don't need to over tighten these either, and these caps just finger tight. Um, you've got your hose, decent sized hose, yep, yeah. then coming around here, um, you've got your main motor, you can see the fan behind there, the cooling fan, that starts running when you turn it on, also when you turn it on the display lights up, okay, around here you've got your on off switch and your IEC connector to your 13 amp lead, and that's your fan for your main motor, okay, that starts up when you start the uh, compressor up, okay, going around the other side, uh, basically, You've got the details on the actual motor, tells you all about the specifications of it, and then you've got your warning sign. Uh, one thing I found quite funny was the actual build quality of this is fantastic, but I think uh, the, the lads in Sheffield must have had a couple, maybe one too many Yorkshire ales because this sign is a bit cockeyed. So I think they must have been a bit tipsy when they put that one on. Quite funny, really, but uh, yeah, the build quality is fantastic. Safety wise, uh, I, I do. I have noticed, right, there's dual 5000 psi burst discs, one here and one on the other side, and that's good because if one fails to blow, the other one should blow, so that's, that's a good good safety feature. Now, 3000 psi, um, sorry, three, 300 bar is about 4500 psi, if I'm right, roughly around that, so really they should never blow unless the auto cutoff fails and it over pressurizes, and then they should blow. Um, but really, you should never leave your compressor alone. You know, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on them just in case something goes wrong. Now, we'll go and power up now. So we'll turn this on like so. So you'll hear the electric motor, cooling fan start up. That blows air over the piston. Okay. So you get this dis dis display here. Excuse me. <clears throat> and it says press to confirm lubrication. So the first thing you do is check the two levels. Check where the uh, the red dot, the lubrication uh, crank level is on the red dot and also the silicon oil is on the blue line. Okay, so once you've done that, press the middle, that confirms it. So it's confirmed, okay. This goes into your display. Now, what you've got here, you've got, whenever you turn it on, and when you ever depressurize it, it will also, re also always resets to 100 bar, okay, or 100, whatever you tell it to. If you rotate this, you can change the units to bars, PSI, and MPA. You rotate it again, that's your start. So that's the pressure you start at, okay. So if we go back to set pressure, press the middle button, that, you get a little arrow there, so you can actually rotate it. So you can rotate it up and backwards and that alters the pressure, okay? So we're gonna pressure all this to 300 bar, yeah, this is the max. So we're gonna rotate it all the way around, it gets to 300, there we go. And then just press the middle again to confirm it. Okay, so that says it's set. Now, if you rotate it, you can still change the units if you want. I've left mine on bar, because I now to start it, yeah, you rotate that and just press the middle and you'll hear it start to pump. And what it will display after that, we'll just press this and just make sure the actual bleed valve is actually closed before we start this. That's it, okay. So yeah, so if you press play, start, and up it goes. Now it tells you the temperature, it tells you it's running, it it's pressurising. Right, that's the pressure in the pipe. See how rich it is going up? And you can pause this by just pressing the middle of the button. And that says fill paused. Now it says fill or abort. So you can rotate it backwards and forwards, the wheel. Okay, so if you rotate it back to resume, you can press it and it'll start resuming. You rotate it to abort and press the middle button, it'll abort it and then you just bleed the valve. Okay, so we're going to continue. So press, rotate it back to resume, press the middle. See the pressure is at 138 bar at the moment. Resume it, as it goes again. You see the temperature is 30, but auto push up at 75. See the pressure, it's going to be there any minute now to kick this off. And there it goes. So that says fill complete. So once you've done all that, yeah, all you need to do is go down to your vent, 
And now that you'll get a lot of moisture out here when you fill the gun. So always have a maybe have a cloth or a bit of rag underneath it because all the moisture comes out here. Lead it, that's it. You look two fingers like that, that's it, all done. And then see how it resets itself. It tells you it's depressurized and then it resets back to 100 bar, ready for your next fill. So it always defaults at 100 bar. So I'll, I'll store this in, a, in, a, in its original box, uh, in a corner. It's so compact, it just tucks in the corner of the room out of the way, in its storage box. And uh, just the main thing, I, I'm just going to leave it running for five minutes. Leave that cooling fan running for another five minutes, let it completely cool, and then shut it off, and then just turn the mains off, switch off, and it'll just shut itself down. And that's it. So this is a really nicely put together piece of kit. Uh, it's quite... <laughs> I've got kind of that quite amusing at the actual size of cockeyed, yeah. But uh, yeah, the actual equipment itself, the actual build quality, is it worth the 830, 850, or some place of 900 quid worth? Uh, compared to the Nomad 2, yeah, I think it is because the amount of engineering that's gone into this, uh, the build quality I think is much better than the Nomad 2. Um, the um, noise level of it is probably only half the Nomad. I shall get a, a dB on it and see what it's like. Um, the only plus sign about the Nomad is you can take it in the field, you can run it off your car battery, yeah, uh, and then you can actually charge your guns in the field. But I'll probably use this, this I'll charge my 7 litre bottle up, because I'll take my bottle down the range, and this will do. This will be great for just charging, mainly charging the bottle and doing any other fields. And I've also got my Nomad too if I need it as well. So yeah, really impressed with this bit of kit. Uh, everything I've heard about it from people say so it's fantastic, uh, never heard any reliability issues. Um, change the crank oil at 50 hours. It does actually display the uh, when you just start it up. It shows the hours as well. You turn it on, but you can always keep a separate record of that. But to get to 50 hours, that's quite a lot of filling, actually, to be quite honest. And then the, uh, you know, for instance, it took only two and a, two and a half minutes to fill Maleshi from 50 to 300 bar. Um, the Uragan took 15 minutes with the Nomad 2. I expect this to do it in probably 10. Maybe even less, we'll find out at some point. So yeah, lovely bit of kit. Uh, recommend? Yes, definitely. I, I think it's fantastic. One thing I do like about it, even though it's quite heavy, is it's very <laughs> surprisingly compact. So if anybody's seen the picture of my Nomad next to it, uh, it's not that much bigger. It's about, only about twice the size of, of the Nomad 2. Yeah, so I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Ah, good afternoon. So I'm here with my new Hill EC3000. Uh, arrived yesterday, so I've just set it up. So uh, I'm just going to show you where the actual reservoirs are for the actual lubricants. So what you've got, you've got the crank oil here, and you've got a little red dot in the middle of it. So what you've got to do, you've got to fill it up from the top. You've got a red cap as well, which you can't see behind the pipe. You take that off and just fill it into there until the actual level is level with that red dot, okay? And if I zoom out a little bit more, you'll see there's a reservoir here. This is for the silicon oil. That's also got a blue top, so it matches up with the blue top of the actual oil. So you've got the, to show you this, the silicon, got blue top, yeah. Crank oil, got red top. Okay, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Just tell you all about this on the quick fill guide. So yeah, you top that up to the blue line, the silicon oil, yeah, and you top the crank up to where the middle of the red dot is. So zooming out, so what I'm going to do, I'm just to test her out, um, I've got my Urigan here, um, I've just shot her down to, actually she's down to 45 bar, she's actually just gone off the reg, normally she's gone off the reg about 60 bar, so I've got a bit carried away, <laughs> and shot an extra, extra magazine, didn't intend to, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill her to 300 bar, uh, from 45 bar, on the, on the uh, Leshy 2 gauge, uh, using the hills here, I'm going to time it and see how long it takes, okay, so I've got the timer here, so what you need to do first, you've done, you've checked your crank oils, you've checked your silicon oil, you've got a, a power switch at the back here where the, the uh, IEC uh, plug fits into the power lead. So you turn that on, okay, you'll hear a fan start up, and you get a display here, it tells you the running hours, yeah, and then it basically check, check, tells you to check the lubricants. So you check your lubricant levels are fine, and then you press the centre of the, the, the rotating button, and that says OK, lube confirmed, it ticks it. And then it asks you to set the pressure. So we're going to rotate it up and basically to set the pressure. Like so press the button and then rotate it. And it'll only go up to 300 max anyhow. So just rotate it all the way. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. To 300 bar and then confirm. Press the middle of the button again. 
Now it's set the pressure, then you rotate it again, and you've got one position goes to the, the pressure readings like bar, PSI, and the MPA. Rotate it again, and then it says start. And when you press this, it starts the compressor. So here we go. And the time is running. So this, is, uh, this compressor is um, actually a lot quieter than Nomad 2. Um, I will probably get a, a decibel meter on it and compare the two, but it is notably quieter yeah, than the, uh, the, the Nomad. So we'll see how we go. Uh, on the display, as it's pumping, it tells the running time, it displays the temperature, which is 28 centigrade, it's got a thermal cutoff at 75 centigrade, where it took itself down and then it'll restart itself when it's cool. It also tells the pressure gauge, so it's up to 109 bar already, so it's going pretty well. Uh, 160 bar, 190 bar, 200 bar. It's going pretty quickly, it's quite a small tank. Okay? We'll wait for it to shut off and then we'll hold to stop the timer. Not far off now. Okay. So 150, 160, 162. We check the gauge on the actual, yeah, it's going up nicely. So the pressure two gauge on the rear of the stock is going up nicely. It's probably going to get a little warm, which is understandable. Not too bad actually. Uh, temperature gauge 44. Uh, pressure on the compressor is now 208 bar and climbing. So 215, 220, yeah. 230 bar, 240 bar, so it's, it's pretty quick. We're at 1 minute 45 seconds now. As soon as we get a little warm on the electric, 265 bar, 270 bar, 280 bar, 290 bar, and that's it, she stopped. Okay, so that's reading 300 bar on the compressor. Looking at the Leshy, the Leshy gauge is actually reading just under that, about 295. So that's more than enough. So when you've done that, what you need to do is obviously bleed the line. So just move that out of the way. So what you're going to get, you get quite a bit of moisture out of this. So you just put a bit of cloth in. When you open this, this bleed valve, you'll get quite a bit of moisture out. So completely vent that. Okay, we'll have a cloth underneath it to clear any moisture. Close it back up. And then you can turn this off. So every time you turn the compressor on and off, it automatically resets to its 100 bar pre, uh, preset. So it won't go any higher than that unless you actually adjust it up yourself, okay? So that's good. So that took uh, two minutes, two minutes, 10 seconds. Yep, which is pretty quick. Um, I know the Nomad 2, which I use regular from 50 bar to 300 bar for my Leshy, takes five minutes 30, I think, five and a half minutes. So that is basically, it's at least twice as fast, yeah, twice as quick as the Nomad. And it is noticeably quieter as well. So yeah, it's a really nice bit of kit. Um, when you consider the price, um, the Nomad is about 625 to 650 now. And this is about, well, I got it to 8, 825. So it's a couple of hundred pounds more, but when you consider what you get and the quality, uh, it's quite heavy as well. I think it's about 23 kilos, but because you've got these grab handles, it's great. The box it comes in is a, a heavy duty actually cardboard box. And because of its footprint, it's quite narrow, you can actually store this convenient in a fairly small room. I mean, my main room is only 12 by 14 foot, and this tucks in the corner in its box very nicely indeed. So I certainly won't be putting, <laughs> putting it outside of my cold and damp shed. But yeah, really good bit of kit, seems to work very well, didn't, didn't take that long. I will be talking, taking a, doing a video on how long it takes to charge my Urigan. My Urigan's got a 530cc uh, bottle on it, and that was going to take, now the Nomad used to take about 15 minutes to fill the Urigan from 100 bar, when the, that's when it just got to start to come off the reg, about 100 bar, up to 300 bar fill. So I will do a little video on that. 
But yeah, um, Leshy, it took uh, 2.10 and it normally takes about 5, 5 minutes 30 seconds uh, with the Nomad. So yeah, noticeably quicker. Uh, I've also ordered a, a, a one-way valve adapter so I can connect this hose directly to the hose on my 7 litre bottle. And I'm going to charge that. I'm going to basically I'm going to I'm going to put it on charge from 100 bar. It's on about 100 bar and charge it to 300. And because of this thermal cutout, uh, the hill will probably shut itself down if it gets too warm at over 75 degrees centigrade, and then it'll automatically start itself back up and continue filling. So we'll see how it handles that. Okay. But with a, with a, a 7 litre bottle, it's going to take a while. Obviously, it's quite a large capacity. Not not so much the pressure, but it's the capacity. That's going to take time, so you expect it. But I think once it's filled to say 300 bar, uh, it's probably advisable not to really uh, shoot your uh, empty your bottle down to below 200, really, because most rifles are two, 250 and 300 bar fills, aren't they? And that's if you go full fill. So yeah, uh, in the future I shall probably just uh, just use the bottle down to about uh, you know maybe 150 or 180 something like that, and then uh, and then charge it from there. So I hope you like that little video. Really nice piece of kit. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be using it a fair bit and look at its reliability. But everybody who's who has one of these says they're fantastic. Um, I've not heard of any issues with reliability. So I uh, hope you like that little video. Thanks for watching.